There's a big difference between AI engineers and software engineers, and people often confuse that. One always needs a person in a team that understands the problem. People always ignore or often ignore the product management aspect of formulating the problem you try to solve correctly in the context of problems somebody, some user has. So composing the right team is very tricky. Yeah, and it's one of the things I spend a lot of time advising entrepreneurs on how to compose their teams. Team building is very hard, obviously picking the right market. And then within a market, picking the right approach to a market, which part of the market, where do you build your MVP? Where do you get your toehold in the market? All those are tricky things. And the right team in the right uh, market can still fail because of tactics and strategy. Suddenly, everybody wants to do AI. I'd sort of say, don't focus where the crowd is going. Uh, they're mostly just following each other as lemmings. Go where first principles thinking says something can be done. It's very exciting to see how you could transform media, music, animation, lots of things in media. It's exciting to see how you could change programming and how you could change robotics. All kinds of other tools I mentioned things like chip design or product design or website design or antibody design in biology. You pick your favorite area. There's so much to do. Are these things going to get more important? Yes. But we probably already have more than 35, 40 investments in these application areas and always looking for more. Don't follow what others are doing. Think for yourself from first principles. Where can AI make a large difference and apply your thinking? This is where good AI people need to team up with the right kinds of investors to even discuss what areas to apply themselves to. It's a trade-off between no dependence and not a good model and some dependence. But we've always relied on that. We rely on various clouds and we get tied to various clouds. We develop for Windows or iPhone or other platforms. So I do think leveraging platforms makes a lot of sense. Trying to worry about that risk when you have much larger risks of is your application going to work work well enough and really solve a problem, that's a much bigger risk. And I think the focus should be on solving a problem really well. Obviously, being able to move between models is important. And I think should be relatively not easy, but possible. I always believed in the old saying, nothing ventured, nothing gained. And most people don't like to fail, so they don't venture out into anything new. If I can convince one or two people in your audience to take a different approach. Failures don't matter. You get past them. If you're you're not egocentric, when you fail, you say, I failed. Now let's try the next thing. That's worth trying. I use the phrase on important projects that some things are too important not to try. And it doesn't matter what the probability of success or failure is. That's what we did when we invested in plant proteins when nobody was doing it. It wasn't even a turn. That's what we did when we invested in fusion when nobody was doing it. These were too, too important to not try. And if enough people tried and took different shots on goal, then I think we'd have success. That was my view. And and frankly, if you don't take risks, you can't possibly innovate. There's no such thing 
as innovation without risk. And so the only thing you have to decide, given your personal circumstance, how much risk can you take, which is how much innovation can you shoot for? Uh, I would argue most people can take a lot more risk than they think they can. Yeah, because most people who are have academic credentials or other credentials can, in fact, get up and get another job if one fell. It's not like you'll go hungry or your family will go hungry for most technical people. Uh, and so you just say, fine, if this, I'll take this job. If it doesn't work, I'll take the, I'll do the next one or try something great. It's always possible to go back. But as I say, most people fail to try. I'd rather try and fail than fail to try. To a young audience, what I would say is, I was very fortunate. I was an electrical engineer at IIT Delhi. My master's degree is in biomedical engineering. Then I've worked in every field except those two. And I've changed fields very frequently since then. In this cross-disciplinary training, I highly recommend to everybody. And what it has helped me do is to not get caught up in the details of any one area, but to be able to look across areas and synthesize larger things. You have a big AI audience. AI is interesting, but AI in the context of so many other areas, whether it's construction or drug discovery, uh, those become connecting pieces together. And I think that sort of got me very curious about, and, and frankly, it's a lot of fun to do. But I think that's the ability that I've cultivated. Next week uh, at TED, I'll be talking about possible tomorrows that we want to create and can create with technology, a dozen of them, which most experts would say are not possible or not likely. And I will argue they're very, very likely if some entrepreneur makes them happen. And it only takes one entrepreneur to make that happen. Because they're technologically feasible, economically feasible, and societally desirable, like fusion power or public transit. What people get limited by is what the experts are saying. And experts mostly just extrapolate the past. They don't have vision of technology, and entrepreneurs invent the future they want. And there's a fundamental difference between those two approaches to predicting what you want to have happen. If you believe radical change won't happen, you won't attempt it. And so I think it's very damaging when people listen to expert forecasts. I'll give you a good example. When Elon Musk started Tesla, nobody believed electric cars would be important. In fact, the DOE had Department of Energy here had a forecast for a very tiny number of electric cars in the year 2035. So in 2010, they had a 25-year forecast that Elon exceeded in five years. Why? Because they talked to people like General Motors and Volkswagen not to entrepreneurs. And nobody gives credibility to entrepreneurs. The other thing to keep in mind for your audience is... When you attempt large things, things fail. And sometimes I say my willingness to fail allows me to succeed. I don't mind something that has a 90% chance of failing if there's a 10% chance of changing the world. Frankly, it's like climbing Mount Everest, only much more fun for me. Uh, every person's different. I still would love to climb Mount Everest too, uh, not to get that wrong. This idea of believing things are possible and then driving to make them possible is what's important and how society changes. My other favorite saying is improbables are not unimportant. 
only improbables are important. We just know which improbable of a thousand improbables is important. And that's what entrepreneurs are. They take a lot of shots on goal. They try a lot of things, most fail. But the thing that affects technology is the one out of a thousand that would. 